Yo guys, how you all doing today? It's me, it's Murray Miller 75 Guys, I'm back for another video. Special one today, Scottish Cup winning team 2016. Where are they now? So, let's talk about that. <laughs> Guys, as I said in the intro there, I'm going to be discussing our Scottish Cup winning team from 2016. Uh, going through everybody who was involved in that special day in May, giving my opinion on their time at Easter Road and uh, discussing what's happened to their careers since they've left Easter Road. Obviously there's still a few guys who are in there and that'll be interesting to see uh, people's opinion, obviously, how they're still coping at Easter Road just now. But that being said, let's get right in amongst it. I'm going to start with the polar bear, Conrad Logan. So, let's be honest, folks. Who had heard of Conrad Logan before he signed for Hubs? I'm going to be honest enough to say I had heard of him, wasn't impressed by the sign-in. Um, I can't remember where I found out the news that we'd signed them. I think it might have been sitting watching Sky Sports um, when we'd signed them. And if I'm being wholeheartedly honest, I remember saying at the time, I went, why are we signing another goalkeeper? Obviously, we had Mark Oxley there, who was at that point in time the undisputed number one. Um, we also had the young Finnish goalkeeper as well, uh, Vertinen, I want to say his name is, but I, I could be totally wrong. Um, so for me, at that time, I didn't think we needed another goalkeeper. But obviously he came in and his debut was obviously against Dundee United in the, the semi-final. Let's be honest as well, who sat there and thought, this guy's a wee bit out of shape. Now let's, I'm saying that, I know I'm the athlete, right? I never have been, I never will be. But I looked at Conrad Logan and I thought, you're massive, mate. And I just, there was something about, there was just something about him that I thought, I can't, I'm not confident about you today. And I'm so happy that the guy made me eat my words. His display in the, the semi-final and subsequent games after that, he was just what we needed at that point. He was a no-nonsense goalkeeper commanded his area better than what any goalkeeper we had at the time was doing. Um, he wasn't afraid to give the defenders a wee bit of, a wee bit of stick, I think it has to be said. And yeah, I mean, for me, the guy will always be a Hibs legend, despite the fact that he only played eight times for Hibs. I was gutted when we let him go. Um, obviously, now he's playing for Mansfield Town. I think he's on loan just now at Forest Green Rovers. And if I'm being wholeheartedly honest, I mean, I'd love to have him back. Let's be honest, we could we could do a lot worse just now, and that's no disrespect to uh, Rocky or Adam Bogdan, to be honest. But I still think we could do we um, we could do him at the club, to be wholeheartedly honest. But that's me. Anyway, that's my opinion on the big polar bear. The next one I'm going to talk about is, of course, Darren McGregor. <laughs> say about Darren McGregor. Apart from the fact he is an absolutely stand-up guy, I've had a, a real real pleasure in meeting him a few times off the park. Uh, he was involved in something that we've done in the changing room uh, fairly recently and he came across as a very, very down-to-earth guy, very happy to be in the position that he was in. Obviously, it's well known that Darren McGregor was working in exile clothing before he, he turned professional and signed for St Mirren. Um, couple of good seasons at St Mirren obviously led to him going to Rangers. One good season there and he obviously came down the road to, to Hubs and he's been there ever since. He's still there now. He's registered 157 appearances for Hubs and scored seven goals. Um, and if I'm being wholeheartedly honest, you know, the guy is... I, I love him to bat, say. I mean, the thing is, I know a lot of Hubs fans just now are quite critical of quite critical of him and that's probably a wee bit unfair because he is as I say he's a guy who's he's lived the dream 
he's been obviously a hub supporter, born and bred in Leith. It looked at one point as though he didn't have a football career on the back of two horrific knee injuries. He's kept on plugging away and he was part of the team that brought the, the Scottish Cup home to, to Leith. I mean, that is, if that's not worthy of a film, I don't know what else is. But I mean, genuinely, a really, really nice guy. Um, I don't think, he, you know, he's one of these defenders that, you know, defenders usually lose a, a yard of pace um, as they get older. But I don't think Darren McGregor's done that yet. And, you know, the fact that he's 34, he's no lost that yard of pace. I think he's just got a wee bit more... Definitely smarter as his times go on, a lot more experienced and I think he could still do a job for a lot of football teams to be honest, never mind Tibbs, I think he could still do a job for a lot of, a lot of football teams and yeah I'm delighted that he's still at Hibs to be honest, um, yeah, so that now brings me on to Paul Hanlon. <laughs> I know I've been quite critical of Paul Hanlon in the last couple of months and I have been I hold both my hands up for that and the reason why I think I've been really critical of him is the fact that he I think he's losing his I'm not going to say he's losing his way a wee bit but I do think that his time is now slowly slowly but surely coming to an end at Hubs and that is I think that's quite sad in a lot of ways because he's the same as Darren McGregor he obviously has lived the dream he's been a hub supporter he's played for the club he's captained the team he's, he's scored for the team he's won the Scottish Cup with the team and I mean he's done what what every football fan wants and dreams of doing and that is again playing for your local outfit playing for the team that he supported and his legacy of the club is undeniable there is no getting away from that he will always have a, a place in the hearts of a lot of Hibs supporters, myself included. Um, I just, I think the reason why I'm so critical of him is just the fact that I don't want him to ruin that legacy. Do you know what I mean? I really don't. I don't want him to lo lose that legacy at all. And I think that um, as time goes on, maybe it'll, it'll become more apparent that as I say, maybe his time at Easter Road is coming to an end. But maybe I'm just maybe I'm being a bit too um a bit too pessimistic. So anyway, that now brings me I'm gonna pick my book up, guys, because I mean I really should be doing this anyway, but you know, hey ho. Uh, so anyway, I've got everything written here, you see. Anyway. Um anyway, um so that now brings me on to Liam Fontaine. <laughs> So, when Hibs signed Liam Fontaine, I'll be, I'll be honest, I was absolutely ecstatic when we signed him because I knew his name through Bristol City. Obviously, you know, at the time he had played quite regularly for Bristol City down in the, the English Championship. Very surprised at the time that we had managed to sign him because the guy for me was just, I thought he was class. And his time at Bristol City, I thought he was absolutely superb. Um, that was obviously quite relevant as well. And it was quite easy to see when he did come up to Hubs. And, uh, you know, that, that first season in the Championship, when we were playing teams like Cowden Beath and Aloha and everything like that, the guy was just, uh, he, he was just a step ahead. Do you know what I mean? And he made, it, he made the game look easy at times, I thought. You know, I think there was times where... He probably was a wee bit, maybe too lax, like a bit too relaxed. And I think sometimes that might have led to the odd mistake or two. But overall, I mean, the guy had 100 appearances for Hibs, scored four goals. I thought he was, you know, a really, really good signing for us. Obviously, he's now playing his trade up at Ross County. And I think that Ross County have got themselves a really good player. Obviously, he was... Part, I think he was part of the team that got them. They were there when they were relegated and he came back up. I think, don't quote me. Um, but I mean, he is. He's a leader. He's a leader among men, and I think that he is. 
he was one of the, the players at the time. He was he was one of the captains that Hibs had at the time. He was a captain without being named captain, to be honest. As I say, I think he's a leader among men and a really, really good player that Hibs had. Anyway, so that's what I've got to say about Big Fonz. That now brings me on to the one, the only, Sir David Gray. <laughs> So guys, what can I say about the man, the myth, the legend, Sir David Gray? Um, he was obviously Alan Stubbs' first signing at Hibs, I have to be honest. When Hibs signed him from Burton Albion, I remember speaking to my, my dad at the time and you know he says, oh, we've signed a fullback, David Gray, Burton Albion. And I remember saying at the time, I was like, is this the standard of player that Hibs are now signing? Jeez, oh. That was genuinely my first reaction to David Gray and my opinion of him can change completely when I seen him play in that first season in the championship. I thought he was outstanding. He was easily an eight or nine most weeks. He very rarely had a poor game or he very rarely has a poor game for Hibs. Um, he, he's one of these characters that even when the, the game is gone and you're getting beat, he still rolls his sleeves up and tells you, come on, let's you know try and get something out of it. You know, he doesn't... He, he never lets his heat drop and I mean he is for me an absolute club legend. I mean he's sitting on 172 appearances for Hibs. He scored 14 goals in that time I think um, uh, for Hibs and I mean honestly I'll never I'll never be I'll never be more grateful to him than what I was on that day in May. Um, you know you've seen what it meant to him to be the, the captain. The, the man who scored the, the winning goal to win that cup, you know, uh, on his knees at full time, you know, he could, it, he couldn't believe it going up, lifting the cup, or that's how it looked to me anyway. And I, I mean, he was just, he's been a fantastic sign, a fantastic servant of the club. Obviously, he's still at Hibs just now. And I'm being honest, again, you know, he falls into that bracket where, you know, maybe it's time, you know, to maybe start winding down because I think he's been really unlucky the past couple of, the last maybe year or two of his career because he's got bad, bad injuries. And it's all because he's that kind of player that he'll throw himself into a tackle that he's no right to win, but he'll still do it because he's a club captain. He'll still do it because he's got that, in his mind, he's got that outside chance of winning the ball. Um, the tackle on Dean Shields in the final... I don't know if anybody will remember it, but you actually there's a tackle on Dean Shields that happens at the halfway line where he's actually sprinted half the pitch to catch up to Dean Shields. We all know Dean Shields was a quick player anyway for his time at Hibs, but he's caught all the way up to him, slid in, won the ball, and he's took a heavy hit for Dean Shields on the way down. But he still got up, and he still obviously then went away to score the winning goal. But that in that 10 seconds or so, that emphasises David Gray and what he's all about. As I say, I think maybe it's time for him to maybe start winding down a wee bit. Is he going to be, he's not going to be an automatic starter every other week now. Does that mean that Jack Ross has got his eye on somebody else or whoever? I don't know, but all I'm going to say is we've got to enjoy him for the time that we've got him. So that's all I can say about the man, the myth, the legend, David Graham. Oh, sorry guys, that's a ping on my phone there, I beg your pardon. Uh, so that's going to bring me on to Fraser Five. Now, talking about Fraser Fiver, he was another one that I was delighted that we had signed. I remember him, his breakout season at Aberdeen and obviously I watched him a few times when he went down to Wigan and he always struck me as the kind of player that he was a really, really classy player. Really confident on the ball, was always looking for a pass because nine times out of ten I always find that pass which, I mean, spoke volumes for him. Um, but again, he was, he was a player who, again, I think he was just delighted to be at a club like Hibs. 
you know, when he's been speaking about his time at Habs, be it through the DVDs or the Scottish Cup win or just in general, you can always tell how much pride he has about wearing the green and white. And I mean, to me, the guy is, I mean, he had 77 appearances for Habs. And to me, that was enough to make him a club legend because he played his part on that day. You know, he was the same as everybody on that pitch. He played his part. And I mean, obviously, now, he's, I mean, since leaving Easter Road, he's had a bit of a check of time because obviously he went back to Dundee United. He's now playing at Cove Rangers, but obviously in Scottish League 2. Um, I think that's, he's, he's too good enough for them. He's far too good enough. And I think the guy's only 28, 29. So he's still got a lot of mileage there. Do you know what I mean? And I definitely think he's got, a, he's definitely got something there to offer a team in the top flight in Scottish football. I mean, I thought the guy was absolutely class. Really, really did. I really enjoyed watching him play at Habs. So that now brings me on to Dylan McGeoch. So speaking about Dylan McGeoch here, guys, Dylan McGeoch for me was a player who, again, the guy just, for me, the guy used class. Do you know what I mean? I think the problem that Dylan McGeoch had in his time at Hibs, and, you know, had 95 appearances at Hibs, it probably should have been more, but he was injured constantly. And it was always the wee niggly kind of injuries, like, a thigh strain here, a groin strain there, or whatever. And I mean, I think that the best, the best time he has, the best time that he had at Hibs was under Neil Lennon. You know what I mean? I remember listening to an interview with Neil Lennon um, when he says, you know, it's on on his head when it came to injuries, and he was right. I think Dylan McGeoch had that sort of mindset where I can't go for that because I injured myself. And then if he's injured, then it's it's how long we're going to stay on the, the, the treatment table for and things like that. And Neil Lennon, to his credit, I think Neil Lennon took that out of him and he just showed how good a football player he was in that season uh, when we when we were back up in the, the top flight, the first season back up. And to me, as I say, the guy was just, could pick a pass, could, he could tackle, you know, really quick guy, box-to-box -box kind of player. Really, really classy football player. Obviously, after leaving Hibs, he went to Sunderland. Didn't he really work out for him then? I think it's fair to say. He's back up the road at Aberdeen now. Obviously, we were we were in the, the market for him. I've heard a lot of sort of theories about why didn't they come back to Easter Road. One of them being, well, Jack Ross was his manager at Sunderland. He couldn't have fancied him then. But I don't think it's as, I don't think it's, it's as black and white as that. I think that if he's probably asking too much. That's that's my opinion. But I mean genuinely again a guy who I thoroughly enjoyed watching at Easter Road and to me is rightly a club legend. So that now brings me on to Super John McGinn. Super John McGinn here, and to me, that's what it was. He was Superman. I mean, honestly, the guy was absolutely class. I remember the first season that we'd signed him, and I mind my pal saying to me that, um, you know, we signed him for 100000 100, And I thought, that's a pretty good deal. And I always remember in that first season, that 15-16 season, there was just, there was, there was something there. But the problem that John McGinn had in that season was he was still a bit too raw. He was a wee bit rash at times, I think it's fair to say, especially when he was going battling for the ball. But after that, I mean, that's that third season in the Championship, um, that, season, that first season back up in the top flight, half of the next again season, before he went to Aston Villa, he just showed what a great player he was. Could tackle, run all day, pass, had an eye for a goal. You know, he had 136 appearances for Hibs, 18 goals. And he was just such a he was such a big player. 
He was just class. And I mean, he deserves everything that he's got now. He's at a big club like Aston Villa. Unfortunately, Aston Villa, I think, are going to go down. You know, whenever football season kicks off, uh, again, I think Aston Villa will go down. But if Aston Villa go down, he will be at Chelsea, Man United, all these kind of teams because he deserves to be in that bracket, in my opinion. He just, I mean, the guy is class, in my opinion. That brings me on to the one, the only... Louis Stevenson. So there's not really a lot of words I can use here for Louis Stevenson. I hear that I hear quite a lot of words bandied about about him quite a lot and the one word that I will use for him, he is a club legend. Make no bones about it, he's a club legend. Only man in the club's history to win the both major trophies, uh, the League Cup and the Scottish Cup, and he's closing in on 500 appearances for them. He's on 483 just, just now. And I mean, to me, the guy is just... He is a club legend. And I think we will miss him when he goes. Uh, I know, again, I've been quite critical of him in the last maybe couple of months and I can fully, fully put my hands up for that. But what I will say, and I will say this for him right now, Louis Stevenson is an absolute gentleman. Uh, I've had the pleasure of meeting him. I've done the interview with him for the channel not that long ago. And um, I mean, genuinely, a lovely, 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 lovely man. Just... I think is a kind of guy that is just so happy to be where he is, doing what he's doing for as long as what he can. Um, as I say, I think he is another one who, unfortunately, his time is winding down at Hibs. I don't think there's any argument there. But, I mean, again, from a personal point of view, he's just, he's a gem. Gem a guy, and I do think we will miss him when he goes. So that brings me on to Anthony Stokes. So, there's not really a lot I can say about Anthony Stokes. Um, I think one of the words that goes with him, certainly during this time at Hibs, is frustrating. Um, obviously he, he was at Hibs in three spells his first spell was under John Hughes uh, he scored 24 goals that season he struck up a good partnership with, um, with Derek Riordan and you know everybody like that he obviously came back in the 15-16 season I think it's fair to say it didn't quite work out for him that season I mean obviously we know how good he was on the, the day of the cup final he was unplayable that day um, but the rest of the time he was incredibly frustrating because of the fact he was such a good player or sorry he is such a good player um, and he deserved so much more than what he got but there was times where you kind of knew what you were going to get with him because if you looked interested then he was fit if you didn't look interested you knew you weren't going to get a lot with him um, and I mean, it, that kind of, that was true for the, the, when he came back on the third spell because, you know, he was scoring, I think he scored 11 goals in his third spell at Hibs and he had, but, but there was always controversy that followed him. Look at the game against Rangers at Ibrox when he had, uh, was it Ryan Jack by the throat? The day we played Dundee, Easter Road, he punched another player in, in the balls. The, the infamous fire extinguisher incident with him and Danny Swanson out in Portugal when we were on our winter break. You know, these are things that kind of, unfortunately, controversy was never far behind with, with Anthony Stokes. I mean, again, I'm sure he was, you know, a nice enough character, but controversy never was never far behind, and that really plagued him. And the thing is, he's had a real check of time again, for leaving Hibs, you know, he's had spells doing in England, he's currently playing for 
Perpulus, I think that's what their name is, away out in Iran. He was out, obviously went AWOL when he was in Greece. And for me, you know, it is again, this is where the frustrating bit comes in because he's still, he's only 30. And he's still, I think he's got a lot more in the tank to offer, to be honest. But is he ever going to get that chance to play at a bigger level than what he is now? I don't think so because I don't think a lot of teams will come in for him. And that is really, really, really disappointing. So that brings me to the end of the... Oh, sorry, no, I've got one more player there. The last player I'm going to talk about for that day is, of course, the one, the only, Jason Cummins. <laughs> so, what can I say about Jason Cummins? Um... I'll say the same thing with him as what I said with Tony Stokes here. One word that comes to mind when you think of Jason Cummins is Joker. Crazy. Um, the guy, for me, was just... I would have hated to have been his manager because he struck me as a kind of player that he was all for a laugh and a joke and he was all for... You know, he's pretty banter around the dressing room and things like that. And to be fair, every every team needs a Jason Cummins. Every team needs a Joker. But there, I'm sure there was points where that was probably too much. An instant I'm going to talk about was obviously the the infamous, uh, is it Gar Gardo, Guardo, whatever his name is, the wrestler. You know, having a, a visit up at East Main for whatever reason. You know, two days before the semi-final against Aberdeen and he's gone about with a pair of pants on, a pair of socks stuffed in his pants and he's diving about the couches and everything like that. But that was him. Do you know what I mean? That was obviously him. That was a character. You know, he was he was obviously one of these guys that tried to get everybody happy. And I think he'd done that quite well, you know. Um, you know, his time at Hibs was... It was definitely twofold because obviously he came into the the season. Eh, sorry, he came into the team the season we got relegated. Um, he obviously missed the penalty that relegated us. You know, and he did say, you know, I'm not going to leave Hibs until I get them promoted. And he he became after that he became a really really big player. You know, he scored scored goals for fun in the championship in Scotland, and he scored a few, obviously a few goals in in the lead up to. Left in the Scottish Cup against obviously big players, a eh, big team. Sorry, I beg your pardon. Um, I'm being honest. I would love to have him back at Hubs because he was just a goal scorer. He was a poacher. He was one of these players that you know for 80, 85 minutes of a game, he wouldn't do anything, but then he'd score you a goal that could potentially win you a game. You know what I mean? And again, he's another one who's had a wee bit of a checker time after leaving Hubs, obviously. He signed for Nottingham Forest. They looked at one point like he was going to, like he was going to do a lot for them. You know, he scored a couple of goals against Newcastle, I believe. Uh, I think that was the team anyway. And then the next thing you know, he's obviously he's went on loan to Peterborough. He's went on loan to Luton. He's went on loan to I think there was another team in there as well. I think it might he might have been on loan at Shrewsbury before signing for them permanently. I don't know, but I mean, obviously he's playing for Shrewsbury now. And, I, you know, I don't actually think he's done a lot for them, apart if he scored two goals against Liverpool. Do you know what I mean? And that, that to me was, you want, you, want to, you want to look at Jason Cummins as a football player, look at that game against Liverpool. You know, he didn't do anything apart from he slipped the ball in the net twice. You know what I mean? That was, that was him. Do you know what I mean? So, as I say, a player, I'd love to have him, I'd love to have him back at Easter Road. I genuinely, genuinely think that he was the kind of player that um, that every team needs. So anyway, guys, that's the starting 11 all done. I'm going to quickly run through the subs now. So that I'll, I'll start with uh, the sub goalkeeper, who was, of course, Mark Oxley. I'm now going to go through the subs bench for that day. I'm going to start, of course, with the substitute goalkeeper, who was, of course, Mark Oxley. Um, 
I find it quite hard to talk about Mark Oxley because he was a decent enough goalkeeper, a really nice character, has to be said, off the pitch, he was a, a really nice guy, you know, I always remember him, you know, getting out, like, giving fans gloves and everything like that at the end of matches, and I think that's a nice enough, I think that's nice when, when players do things like that, but he was far, far, far too error-stricken. Um, he never, for me, at any point, I can honestly say I don't think a lot of Hibs fans ever had that complete confidence in him that he wasn't going to make a mistake. My my stepfather called him, I always remember my stepfather called him Dracula at one point because he was scared of crosses. And that is that is true. That That's ringing really true with me. Um, as I say, I don't think he was... I don't think he was a number one, to be honest, and I, I think that's now becoming more apparent now because I think he's even lost his his place at uh, South End United where he is now. Um, I could be wrong, but I mean, listen, he had ninety one appearances at Hubs. You know, could, would that number have been as much if he had more competition there? I don't know. Um, I don't know. Don't know. But I mean, genuinely, he was. To me, he was an un uninspiring signing, and that is how it panned out. That's maybe I'm being really, really critical of him, but that is genuinely my opinion of him. Next on my list, of course, is Liam Henderson. Look out from the other side. So that now, uh, next on my list is now uh, Liam Henderson. Now I loved Hendo. I thought he was absolutely brilliant at Hibs. Um, again, a really, really nice character off the pitch. Uh, again, I think it was just a, a laddie who was quite happy to be in the position that he was in. He had the skill there that he could back it up with, if you know what I mean. And genuinely, I think that the whole, his whole time at Easter Road was um, probably played out how, um, how a lot of fans would have hoped it would. Um, Obviously, he's left Hibs now. He made the quite, in my opinion, the big decision to move over to Italy. Where was it Barry? I want to say, but Barry, I think, went financially. I think they went tits up and he signed for uh, Verona, Hellas Verona. I know he's at Empoli just now, but I think he's on loan. Um, and you know, to me, that was a massive, massive move to go where. No, a lot of Scottish players go. You know, I think before him, the only guy who played in Serie A, or was the last player anyway to play in Serie A, was Graham Sunas. You know, so that speaks volumes for him, in my opinion, um, at the fact that he, he made that big move and he's got the he's got the, the, the ability there to back it up with. But would, would I love to see him back at Easter Road? I would love to see him back. If reports are to be believed, if reports are to be believed as well, Hibs tried to actually get him in there in January, so could we move for him in the summer? We'll have to wait and see, you know? Anyway, that brings me on to Marvin Bartley. What can I say about Big Marv? Big Marv. I loved Marvin Bartley. I thought he was brilliant. Absolutely brilliant at Hibs. Um, he was genuinely the enforcer, the governor. He was definitely, definitely that. Uh, genuinely, I mean, oh, he was, there was nothing flash about Marvin Bartley. He just done his job and he done it well. Do you know what I mean? And I don't think we've ever replaced him. I would be honest if you were if he could get him if we could get him back, I'd take him in a heartbeat because he was honestly, to me, he is the kind of player Hibs are screaming out for just now. Absolute oh honestly. And he himself has said that he's a stodge hibby. Do you know what I mean? Which I think is absolutely brilliant. And I, I love him for the fact that he's still he's stayed true to us and he's stayed true to to uh, the Hibs way of life. But honestly, I'd love to see him back. Obviously playing his trade out at Livingston just now and to me he's too good for Livingston. He should be back with us. 
Anyway, that brings me on to the squirrel. <laughs> What can you say about Martin Boyle? Martin Boyle is another one for me that, you know, he is the kind of player that every team needs. He's just, you can tell how much a joker he is. You can tell how much an absolute cheeky chappy he is. He, uh, I mean, I love listening to him, like, talking and interviews and that, because he just doesn't give a shit. Do you know what I mean? He just he sees it, sees it how it is, and I think that's absolutely brilliant. Obviously now he's still at Hibs just now. He's turned into a really, really big player for us. I remember when we signed him. We signed him obviously on loan for Dundee. I think it's fair to say at the time it was kind of an uninspiring signing um, because I didn't know that much about him. I don't think a lot of Hibs fans did, but you know we love him now. You know, and I, again, I have to say, off the pitch, really, really lovely guy. Uh, he actually, I remember one of the stories about him that I can, I can remember off the top of my head was he actually bought me a Jaeger bomb when I was in the foreign hand because he noticed that I had a, uh, he had that I had a Hibs jacket on, and he bought me a Jaeger bomb just because I'm a Hibby. Do you know what I mean? I thought I was brilliant, you know. Um, but I mean, he's obviously still playing for Hibs now. He's sitting on 171 appearances just now. 31 goals, he's, he's turned into a really, really big player for Hibs and I hope it's, he's only going to get stronger at Hibs as, uh, as time goes on and obviously now he's a Australian internationalist which doesn't seem quite, I don't know how that came about, it's still I think really strange but you know anyway, that's me. So anyway that brings me on to James Keatons. <laughs> could say a lot about James Keatons, but not for football reasons. I'll talk about football reasons in a second. But one of the things I will say about him, I think he's an, an incredibly brave guy. Um, obviously, anybody who knows uh, kind of Scottish football knows that James Keatons has obviously spoke out quite a lot about mental health and his own struggles with mental health. And um, I think for any guy... To do that, I think is, I think is fantastic. You know, when you get a player there, doesn't it even need to be a player, but I mean, just to talk about your mental health and talk about mental health so freely and openly, I think is brilliant. Genuinely, I think is fantastic. Um, and yeah, I mean, honestly, I think he's just a really, really brave guy. Really brave guy to talk about his mental health the way that he does. Now, to talk about him on a football point of view, I was delighted when Hibs signed James Keatons because obviously you knew what you were going to get for him because obviously the season before he played for Hearts in the Championship, he was obviously floating in and around the, the Hearts team. I think he was unlucky with, with injuries quite a bit when he was there as well. Um, but obviously a goal scorer, that's, that's for sure what he is. Um, I think his time at Hibs, it could have been, I'm not going to say it could have been a lot better because I think it probably played out the way that it was meant to, obviously. He was a big part of the, the Scottish Cup winning side. He then went on and been a big, he, he then went on to be a big part of the, the Championship winning side as well. He effectively won us the league that day against Falkirk when he scored in the 93rd or 94th minute. On his weaker foot. Um, I mean genuinely. He was. I think he was a player for the big occasion. He, he seemed to step it up. Whenever it, whenever it was a big game as well. And I mean. Again. He's a, to me. A wee bit of a checkered. Checkered, uh, checkered past after leaving Hibs. You know. He's had spells at uh, Dundee United. Uh, he was at Hamilton. He went back to Hamilton. And he's now back at Inverness as well. And I think Inverness is probably a good place for him just now because he is working with John Robertson, who obviously was a striker himself, um, who's obviously helping him to be a better striker, but equally as a guy who understands 
um, mental health and the fact that you know footballers are, are humans as well. You know what I mean? So yeah, I mean genuinely, as a player that I was really delighted that we signed him, and you know I think his time at Hibs was was really well spent. I'm nearly there, by the way, guys. I've got two minutes to go. First on, first one uh, is uh, Nicholas Gunnarsson. <laughs> Nicholas Gunnarsson, there's no really a lot, genuinely there isn't actually a lot I can say about Nicholas Gunnarsson because he wasn't actually at Hibs long enough for me to build up a really good opinion of him, well no, I had a good opinion of him but I mean like a better opinion of him, if that sounds, I think I've just made that sound worse, anyway, um, but something that kind of struck me about the guy was the fact that he was quick for a big guy, uh, loved a tackle, was good in the air, um, he obviously had a, a good a good strike on him as well. He scored a cracking goal against Rangers at, um, at Easter Road. And yeah, I mean, he was he was great defensive cover. A great squad player. Um, he only had 15 appearances for Hibs. And I'm actually kind of gutted that he didn't have any more. I'm gutted that he, he left after, uh, after that solitary six months. Um, so... Yeah, there isn't really a lot I can say. I am not even going to attempt to say the name of the team that he's playing further now. Stumgotch, or whatever the hell it is. I honestly, I'm not even going to attempt to try and understand what that language is. Um, but anyway, the last player on my list now is uh, Chris Dagnall. The last player on my list is Chris Dagnall. Now, Chris Dagnall was again. A, I'm not going to say he was a panic buy because that just that sounds a kind kind of shan to be honest. But I remember him being a deadline day signing uh, in the 2015 2016 season, um, and obviously I haven't heard his name for a uh, crew quite a lot. I knew that we were getting a good goal scorer. I say that he didn't score a goal for Hibs, but he still got he still walked away with a Scottish Cup winners medal. So you know there it is. But I mean, I haven't got a lot to say about him because he only again he had fifteen appearances for Hibs. He didn't score, but he was always kind of there and there about for the build up play. He's now playing for Yeovil Town, and yeah, I haven't really got a lot more to say about him to be wholeheartedly honest. So guys, that is my rundown of the Scottish Cup winning uh, team. Obviously, I've I think I've chewed your ears off quite a wee bit uh, just now. But of course, you know we haven't got any football to go to just now. With of course the current climate in the world, so I'm sure me talking about football is going to help significantly with a lot of people, including myself, because obviously I need something to talk about as well. Uh, if you've enjoyed this video, please give it a thumbs up. It really helps me when you do that. Slap a comment in the co in the comment section below. If you're new to the channel, please, please, please give it a th give it a thumbs up and give it a subscribe as well. It's Money Minute seventy five. Find me on Instagram. It's Money Minute seventy five. And find me on Twitter. It's at Money One Eight Seven Five. But that being said, guys, I'll just see you later. And uh, yeah, I'll see you in time for the next video. Hopefully, it'll be a match day vlog. But until that time, see you later. Yeah.
Nous sommes